When building our automated browser tests, it's sometimes a bit difficult to uh, know really how to write them. Uh, but we've explored in the past the Playwright Recorder, but there's also another great tool as part of a recent Playwright release called Playwright Inspector. Let's take a look at how that can help us with authoring tests by mashing on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Playwright Inspector. It feels like a little bit of a mixed metaphor. It does. Like surely there's some sort of like theater related metaphor that they could have used instead of Inspector. Like the stage uh, sure. manager. Raise an issue with the team, I suppose, in the GitHub repo. Yeah. See what they can do about that. It's possibly too late. That ship has probably sailed just to add more metaphors. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start right from the beginning of just writing my first test for a, an existing project. So I'm going to use the, the project that I've been playing around with a bit here, which is the two weeks ready project from the humanitarian toolbox. And I'm going to write a test that just does like the basic, you know, can you launch the app and log into it, uh, which involves like redirecting over to Auth0 and you know, there's like things that you have to wait for. So it's a little bit of a more complex first test other than just, you know, open the page and check to see if it says prepare at the top, which is usually what you see in those getting started kind of scenarios. Um, so what I'm going to do is we'll start out by just adding playwright test. So this is, I'm actually going to use the, the playwright test runner, which um, is like a jest like kind of test runner that it has a bunch of, you know, useful things for playwright. So I'm just going to come in here and do playwright, uh, install that dev dependency of at playwright slash test. And if you didn't already have playwright installed, you would need to then do a npx playwright install, just install all the local versions of the Chromium, Firefox and WebKit browsers. Um, so that would be this command, which I've already done. Um, that one takes a little while if you haven't done it already. And then we're just going to head over to our project here and I'm going to create a test folder. So we will create a new folder called tests and not inside of the dist folder. Cause that would be weird. Where did that just go? It's still in the dist folder. How can I drag that out? Here's my test folder and I'm going to create a new file called user login dot spec dot yes. And in here, I'm just going to create a really simple test using this format. So I'm going to just copy this in. So I import two things, uh, test from playwright test and then expect, which I'm not using yet, but I will in a minute. Uh, I define that test. I'm going to do a log, call it login test. Um, it takes in the page which we can interact with. It's going to go to that local host 8080. And then I'm just going to call page.pause. And what that's going to do, well, let's take a look at what that's going to do. We can go and run this now. And we're going to run it headed. Uh, and I'm going to set the timeout to zero. So I'm going to say, um, I want to actually see the browser running and I don't want it to time out on me. I want this to just run and I'm going to kind of play around with it. At this point, are we allowed to guess what pause might do? Yeah, go for it. So it didn't find any tests does, there because I didn't save it. Uh, but go ahead, guess. What does pause it, do? Does it make you dinner? It does not make you dinner. Hmm. You were thinking of dot James. <laughs> I think it's going to stop the browser so that you can interact with it and then add stuff to the test. So it's looking for, yeah, I think that Simon might be more on the right track with that. So I didn't find my test again because I didn't name my file properly. So it's looking for files at ends.spec.ts. Oh, you had a dash in there, I think, right? I did, yeah. Right, so I did find a test this time and it just brought up the Chromium browser on my other screen. 
and hit that pause and it brought up playwright inspector for me Ooh. so what that lets me do is i can actually step out step over and and uh like continue like a little debug kind of thing that lets me step through my test or i can flip into record mode and then I can start interacting with it. So Playwright Inspector then gives me all of this useful information. Like when I hover over different elements, it'll tell me how I could, uh, what the selector would be to get to that element. And if mm -hmm. I click on it, it actually starts writing that code for me on the right-hand side here. Oh, nice. So now I can come in here and I can simulate my login that I'm gonna do. And put my password in there continue and now I'm logged in so now what I can do is take this code that I probably would have struggled to write just completely on my own I'll close this and I'm going to go and put it inside of my test so I don't need that pause there actually I'm going to leave the pause there so that we can kind of step over through it now it did go and uh, it commented out a few things that were more just like, here's some useful things you might want to add. Um, so there are some things that I'd like to add here. So I would like to uh, make sure that after I click that login button, I'd actually like to test that the page URL matches this. So basically that it starts with um, what I'm expecting to be redirected to, to do my login. So that's adding an expectation to my test. And what else do I want to do here? So we're clicking on the email address, filling it in. Uh, I press tab, um, but then also clicked on the password thing. I probably don't need the tab piece. I can just stick with clicking on the password input and entering my completely real password for now. Yeah, I noticed, you know, si Simon and I both leaned in when that Ooh, password started exciting. filling in. We were like, whoa, what are we, what are we getting access to today? So <laughs> so probably important to note that this will record what you type. Yes, it will. Um, and if that's like real passwords, you clearly do need to be careful about that. So we're actually going to take a look at the password and how we can remove that from the source code here once we get this all working. Um, actually, let's just run this and then we're going to look at a couple changes we can make just to um, add a few more expectations, make sure that we're waiting for like the thing that we're actually expecting in terms of the navigations to happen and everything. But we should be able to go and run this now. And let's just see what happens. So see, I think I would right call screen. pause, play right aside. Like that feels like mm. just what it should be. Maybe. You're clearly very opinionated about the way these things should be named, Simon. Yeah. Yeah, I should definitely contribute a little bit more to this project. Mostly just in telling them what they're doing wrong about naming. Okay, so I'd hit that pause again. And now what I can do is actually just um, hit the step over button. And now it's going to show me what it's about to do. So it says it's going to click that one. It, it highlights it for me and shows a little red dot where it's going to click. And it does the click. And now it's going to click on that email address, enter that email address, click on the password. Really cool that you can like see what it's about to do for each of the steps. And then it's going to click continue and wait for the navigation. And then it's done. But we haven't really tested the expectations of where we end up at the end. So what I'd like to do is um, just improve that part of the test a little bit and then add another expectation or another action of like log back out and make sure that we're actually logged out. So what we can do here is we can actually specify which URL it is that we're waiting for. So here we're expecting after we hit continue uh, that we eventually end up on this page. So this Syntax is a little bit weird here with Playwright, uh, but this is basically a way to avoid a race condition between the click and the wait for navigation. So you just queue up both act, both of these. You, you wait for it to navigate to this page and you click on this and you wait for both of those to complete before going on to the next step. So it is a little bit strange how that's structured, um, but it's specifically to work around some kind of race condition that happens sometimes. Uh, and then, so once I get on that page, I expect 
there to be a logout button down at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to say, uh, wait for this selector to exist, basically, uh, to be truthy. So I'm waiting for that to appear. And then what I'm going to do is click on that and then wait for it to navigate back to the same page again. So I'm going to click the logout button and actually I'm just going to wait for the navigation to complete and not specify. And then I'm going to wait for the login button to show up again. So just adding a few more expectations to that test and a little more uh, user flow. I can run that again. This time, instead of stepping through it, I think I'm just going to hit run and I'll let it go through really quick. Log out and all my tests passed. I don't know what that error is, but test passed and everything worked. Um, I can actually go ahead and run that against all my browsers now. So the this npx playwright, the playwright command, has a bunch of different options to it. So I ran my tests as headed. I can do dash dash browsers all. Actually, I'm just making that up. Let's actually go look at what the commands are. Um, it's not how you do it. And the command line. That was pretty close. Browser equals all. We'll run in all three browsers. I think it's going to run it headless this time because I didn't specifically tell it to run headed. Oh, and some of those failed. That's unfortunate. This I was actually running into earlier. And I did find the solution to it, but I did not write it down. Oh, this is that race condition, actually. So here I'm, uh, I'm clicking the login button and then expecting the page to be there right away, and I didn't do the wait for navigation. So the solution there is actually to do one of these await oh, all. So I kind of alluded to the solution to this one already. So we're going to do a wait for navigation up here. And I think that's going to be sufficient. I might need to give it a URL, but let's just try it this way and see if it works. Taking a little longer to fail if it is going to fail. And it comes back happy. Yay. OK, so having in terms of like this being something that I could check into source code, unlikely that we would want like the username and password to be included here in the in my test, hard coded into my test. Um, but what we can do is we could actually go and add that as an environment variable. So what I could do is say, just set this environment variable of playwright 2wr password to be not my real password exclamation mark. Um, now I have that environment variable there, and I could just reference this as it would be process.env. Playwright 2wr password. And now that should run without having that hard coded password in there. I'll just run it against Chromium. You go. Nice. So you'll notice that Playwright pause when I ran it, when I wasn't running it headed, so when it was running headless, uh, it doesn't do anything. Um, so that's kind of interesting then. You can, if you have build servers that run your tests automatically and they're running headless, adding that playwright.pause won't affect those automated tests, uh, but it will if you're running them locally in a headed mode, It it's a way to you know, have it pause and you can go and inspect what's happening. I've just always found that when I'm writing these types of automated browser tests that you get in those scenarios where 
you're just not quite sure how it, what state it's in. And we we've looked at doing screenshots before, and that gives you a certain amount of information where you can take a screenshot of what it looks like at that state. But even better that you can just pause everything and then start inspecting the application in the browser using the browser dev tools and the playwright inspector. And I imagine then if you're able to use your browser dev tools, then you'd also be able to do something like use like view tools or whatnot. So you can actually inspect your model and figure out uh, yeah, what else question. might be going sideways. Um, this is running Chromium and not Chrome. So mm. let's just see if that's true. Can I come in here? Usually these run it under like a separate profile that might not have the browser extensions you're looking for. Yeah, potentially. I, that's something to play around with. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you can always go and add them because yeah. most browser extensions don't need a browser restart. Um, Curious. And I don't know if it's possible to like specify a browser profile with this when you start it up. I bet you it is, though. Yeah, probably. Can you do extensions in raw Chromium? I assume you can. Don't know. Probably. You might just not have App Store integrations. You might have to right. download the whatever file extension that Install is. Install them like. manually kind of thing. But, a minimum. but that sounds like an excellent thing for us to talk about on another episode. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> all right. That's all I had for today. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on today's episode. Remember to like, comment, share. And if you find yourself with a lot of free time, please feel free to go to the Playwright repositories and uh, upvote all the issues that I'm going to create about renaming everything they've done thus far. Let's see everybody next week. Bye. Cheers. Bye.